it is almost unbelievable how these intelligent, sensitive, intellectual people would repeat the Israeli deceptions and lies about the past and about the present, even when these lies have already been successfully challenged and debunked by no others than Israeli scholars themselves. There is a, a narrative, a version, that uh, the 1948 war uh, started by an Arab attack on the new Jewish state and that the Arab leaders called on the Palestinians to leave and that's why the Palestinians became uh, refugees. Mm -hmm. In my own research and other people who look at the Israeli archives, we showed that actually half of the Palestinians that became refugees became refugees even before one Arab soldier entered Palestine. So actually the Arab war effort was in reaction to the expulsion of the Palestinians by the Jewish forces. Um, the uh, uh, expulsion was part of, of a plan before the war started uh, of the Jewish military and political command to try and get as much of Palestine as possible with as few Palestinians in it as possible. Uh, part of this plan was already implemented when the British were still uh, responsible for law and order. In, in fact, all the expulsions from the cities and the towns took place before the war started in April 1948. The war started on the 15th of May 1948. So I think it's important to, to understand that the war was used by Israel to try and empty Palestine from Palestinians. It's not that the Palestinians became refugees because of the war. They became refugees because of Zionist ideology. Well, I think since uh, 1945, since the Second World War, uh, the world, uh, especially the Western world, decided uh, that it does not want to deal with Zionism and its crimes against the Palestinians for various reasons. Uh, one, one of the reasons I think is we have to remember that uh, already in the 19th century the Christian world didn't want the Holy Land to be a, a Muslim land or an Arab land. So there was a, a strong support from Christian uh, uh, groups and leaders to the idea of the Jews going back to Palestine as they called it. It was also anti-Semitic because if the Jews are in Palestine they will not be in Europe. So that was part of their support. Uh, secondly, uh, Islamophobia, the hate of Islam was, n it's not a new thing. It existed in the 19th century as well. And of course later it's the Holocaust. I mean Europe preferred not to deal with what the Holocaust meant uh, if it all it had to do was to support the colonization of Palestine. So in this respect, I don't think Trump is very different from others. In fact, I think uh, for Palestine, it is better to have Trump than to have Clinton. Hillary Clinton would have been much worse for the Palestinians because uh, she would make us believe as if there is a peace process, if there is a, a reasonable situation, at least with Trump, we are talking a bit more honestly about what the problem is. Uh -huh. So I don't think he really matters that much. It's, we have a basic problem with the way the international community treats the Palestinians uh, in the last 70 years. And uh, I think we have to work to change it. Well, it's difficult to know with Trump. Uh, we yes. don't know. We, uh, I, I think that uh, uh, it will be easier to talk about the reality with Trump because uh, uh, he doesn't play the games of uh, Clinton and Obama. And it's much easier to tell people now you have two options. Uh, either you support an apartheid state, which is called Israel, or you support a democratic state for everyone between the River Jordan and the Mediterranean. Uh, I think that under Trump, at least the conversation will be more 
honest. I don't know what he will do. And uh, my guess is that he will not be that different from other American presidents. Uh, all of them gave Israel carte blanche. All of them allowed Israel to do what it wanted. Uh, and uh, I think that we need to uh, limit the American intervention. Mm -hmm. Then we can have a better chance. All right. Okay. okay, thank you.